Brahman and Vaishnava. The conclusive comparison between Brahmins and Vaishnavas. Sri Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Translated by Bhumi Pati Das. Although Srimad Ananda Tirtha did not mention the process of Pancharatrika in his Brahma Sutra commentary, he has not disregarded the glories of the Pancharatras in his other commentary, the Anu Yakyana, which he wrote for refuting oppositing opinions. It is only some less intelligent people who consider Srimad Vamuni as a verse to the Pancharatrika system. The Pancharatrikas are inclined to the path of Archana, and the Bhagavatas are inclined to Kirtan. In his Bhakti Sandarbha and Krama Samdarbha commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam 7.5.23, Sri Jiva Prabhu has stated, Translation If a Vaishnava Sadaka develops faith for the path of Archana, which is meant for the followers of the Pancharatrika system, then he should exhaustively inquire about that path from the Pancharatrika guru who gave him mantra. It is said that even without archana, by following any of the nine processes of devotional service, headed by surrender, one can attain perfection. So, although according to the opinion of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is no need for the archana mark, which is the only process for the followers of the Pancharatrika system, if one is initiated by a Vaishnav guru who is following the footsteps of personalities like Sri Narada, who is also a Pancharatrika, then he must engage in the archana of Lord Vishnu with the mantras that he received from his spiritual master. To employ others in archana on one's behalf simply confirms one's lack of conviction or laziness in one's duties. Therefore, engaging others in archana on one's behalf is a sign of faithlessness and is thus unacceptable. Although the Bhagavat Vaishnavas do not actually need Pancharatrika Mantra Diksha, Pancharatrika sages like Sri Narada have, in some places, given some importance to archana in order to help regulate the loose character and restless minds of the people. There is no need for the support of Archana and so on, as stated in the Ramarchana Chandrika. O best of the Brahmins, even without Diksha, Purishcharya, and Yasa Vidhi, simply by chanting the mantras of the Supreme Lord, one achieves all perfection. End translation. And in the Bhakti Sandarbha, Sri Jiva Prabhu says, Translation. Next, we consider that a Vaishnav is known as an Uttama, Majjama, or Kanista, primarily according to his advancement in love of God. The symptoms for differentiating the Kanista, Majjama, and Uttama devotees, which reveal whether one is dear, more dear, or most dear to the Lord, are all criteria for establishing the position of devotees. In the Pancharatrika Archana Marg, there are three categories of devotees. The glories of the Vaishnavas mentioned in the Padma Purana, Uttarakhan, refer only to the followers of the Pancharatrika Archana Marg. Translation The characteristics of the Uttama or Mahabhagavat, according to the Archana Marg, are as follows. A Brahmin who has undergone the five kinds of samskars or purificatory processes, like tapa, who has executed the rituals of worship, and who has understood the artha panchika, is called Mahabhagavata. The characteristics of the Majjama, according to the Pancharatrika Archana Marg, are as follows. The five kinds of samskars are tapa, pundra, nama, mantra, and japa. According to the Pancharatrika teachings, one who performs these five activities 
is called Majjhima Bhagavat. Characteristics of the Kanista, according to the Pancharatrika Archana Marg, are as follows. One who marks his body with the four signs of Vishnu, the conch shell, chakra, club, and lotus, and who offers obeisances to other Vaishnavas whose bodies are marked with these signs, is called a Kanishta. End translation. Apart from the Pancharatrika system, we are now presenting the mental symptoms of a Mahabhagavata according to the Bhava Mark, as stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 11.245. Translation Sri Havir said, The most advanced devotee, or Mahabhagavat, sees within everything the soul of all souls, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Consequently, he sees everything in relation to the Supreme Lord and understands that everything that exists is eternally situated within the Lord. End translation. The impersonalists who consider the living entity and the Supreme Lord as one are opposed to the principle of this Srimad Bhagavatam verse. To consider the conditioned living entities as equal to the Supreme Lord is extremely contrary to the principles of devotional service and to the real nature of Mahabhagavatas. The moods of the damsels of Raj found in the Srimad Bhagavatam 10.35.9, indicate the mood of a Mahabhagavata. Now, the specific mental symptoms of a Madhyam Bhagavat are being described in the Srimad Bhagavatam 11.246 as follows. Translation an intermediate or second-class devotee called Madhyamadakari offers his love to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is a sincere friend to all the devotees of the Lord, shows mercy to ignorant people who are innocent, and disregards those who are envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. End translation. Next, the Srimad Bhagavatam 11.247 describes the symptoms of a kanishta in terms of his body symptoms of executing Bhagavat Dharma and also somewhat in terms of his mentality in the following words. Translation A devotee who faithfully engages in the worship of the deity in the temple but does not behave properly toward other devotees or people in general is called a prakrita bhakta, or materialistic devotee, and is considered to be in the lowest position. End translation. The Yasyatma Bodhi verse is applicable to such persons. Prabhupada, Srila Jiva Goswami, and other Vishnupada Acharyas, who are completely dependent on the lotus feet of Sri Sri Gaur, are all worshippers on the path of Bhav in accordance with the philosophy of Srimad Bhagavatam. Among the followers of Sri Gaur, the Bhav path is adhered to rather than the Pancharatrika Archana path, which is followed only to some extent in the deity worship of the Kanista devotees. Sri Lakshmi Puri and Sri Srimad Vishnupad Madhavendra Puri, who were disciplic descendants of Srimad Acharya Ananda Tirta Purna Pragna, Madhvapad, were adherents of the pure Bhagavat system on the path of Bhava Marg. From Sri Madhavendra Puri, Bhagavat Dharm on the path of Bhav has become completely manifested among the followers of Sri Chaitanya. Although the Bhagavat Marg propounded by Sri Madhvacharya has also been accepted by the Acharyas in his disciplic succession, like Sri Vyas Rai, Sri Raghavendra Yati, and Sri Vijayadvaj, as well as the Acharyas of the Mats of Udipi, like Krishnapur, Putugi, Sode, Pejavara, 
Aganadu, Kanura, Palanadu, and also the temple authorities of Kudumbar, Chika, and Manakati. These persons were nevertheless followers of the principles of Varnashram in the Pancharatrika Archanamarg. Sri Jivapad has quoted the following verse in reference to the ninefold procedure for worshipping the deity according to the Pancharatrika system. Translation O oh, most auspicious lady, the nine aspects of deity worship are offering puja, chanting mantras, meditation, fire sacrifices, praying, chanting the holy names, serving, marking the body with auspicious signs, and worshipping the Vaishnavas. End translation. Explaining the five objects of worship, Arta Panchika, Sri Jiva Goswami, Prabhupada has said, translation, The worshipful Supreme Lord, His supreme abode of Vaikuntha, his assets, or tadiya, the pure devotees, his mantras, and the living entities, to know these five subjects is the knowledge of Archapanchaka. In translation. Suresha, a disciple of Sri Ramanuja, had a son named Parasarabhat. A disciple of Parasara was Vedanti, whose disciple was Nambur Varadaraj. The disciple of Nambur Varadaraj was Kilai Lokacharya, who wrote a book named Archa Panchika. The five subjects described by him are different from those described by Sri Jivapad. He has described the subject of Jiva Swarup, the essential characteristics of the living entity, as having five divisions. Nitya, eternal, Mukta, liberated, Bada, conditioned, Kevala, merged in Brahman, and Mumukshu, desiring liberation. The subject of Ishvara Swarup, the essential characteristics of the Supreme Lord, as having five divisions. Para, his original form as Krishna. Vyuha, his quadruple expansions. Vibhava, his pastime forms. Antaryarmi, the super soul. And Archana Avatar, the deity incarnation. The subject of Purusharta Swarup, the essential characteristics of the goal of life, as having five divisions. Dharma, religiosity, Artha, economic development, Kama, sense gratification, Atmanubhav, self-realization, and Bhavad, Anubhav, God-realization. The subject of Upaya Swarup, the characteristic of the means of attainment, as having five divisions. Karma, fruit of activities. Jnana, cultivation of knowledge. Bhakti, devotional service. Prapati, taking shelter. And Acharya Bhimana, assuming the role of a spiritual master. And the subject of Viroda Svaru, the characteristics of impediments, as having five divisions. Swarupa Virodi, obstacles in self realization. Paratattva Virodi, obstacles in God realization. Purusharta Virodi, obstacles in attaining the goal of life. Upaya Virodi, obstacles in the means of attainment. And Prapya Virodi, obstacles in attaining the desired result. In this way, he has described 25 different items.